In part two of this tutorial series, I'll show you how I made this walking dinosaur with a 3D animated model in PowerPoint. So if you missed part one, the basics of this series, make sure to check that out first because this is the advanced section. Just like the shark we saw in the previous video, this dinosaur is just a 3D animated model that has been inserted into PowerPoint and is playing the first scene, which is the term for the pre-made set of animations that are integrated into the model. I then put this dinosaur onto the picture of the park. And now I wanted to show you a few advanced tricks to make it look a little bit more realistic as the dinosaur walks down that path. And the reason that these advanced tricks are needed is because these animated 3D models are truly amazing. Just look at the level of detail on the dinosaur. If you just plop them into your slides and try to animate without any additional thought, you're not really doing them justice or unlocking their full potential. And in fact, you're in danger of making them look a little bit cheesy if you don't make any additional tweaks to them. So let's examine the opening here a little bit more closely. First, you have the shadow that I've added here. It's a little bit hard to see because the path here also has shadows, but if you follow the sliver of light here, you can actually see it. This is just a black, semi-transparent oval with soft edges that follows the dinosaur's motion path. To get the exact motion path on the shadow as well, I simply used the animation painter from the dinosaur and then clicked on the shadow and deleted everything but the motion path and the grow animation since that's important too. That way the shadow follows the dinosaur along the path. And that's the shadow. Always try to add shadows if it makes sense with your page. I did the same thing to the shark here as well. Okay, let's get back into it. Next, we have the dinosaur turning with the curve of the path. This is what's great about 3D models versus 2D images. We can turn the models in a more natural way as they move. And this is simply a turntable animation to the right that is 50 degrees here. Let's keep going and by the way I'll show you how all of these animations fit together after I'm done walking through all of them. Next as you can see the dinosaur has been growing as it's getting closer to us. <laughs> There's probably some calculation you can do to see exactly how much it needs to grow based on the distance it travels, etc. But I just kind of eyeballed it and did 500% from the way that it started. And here I want to take a quick pause to point out a bit of an annoying quirk in PowerPoint that when you grow something using the grow animation, the image becomes blurry, even if it was at a good resolution to begin with. Same thing happens with 3D models, unfortunately. So if I have a small dinosaur like this, and then I put a grow animation on it, this is what will happen. So what I need to do instead is make the dinosaur start off large, then shrink down with an animation, and then grow back up. <laughs> so kind of annoying, but worth an extra step to keep the quality. And of course, the challenge with that is that the dinosaur will flash big first, then shrink down. And there are, are several ways to fix this, but what I decided is just to put on a duplicate image of the park on top of the dinosaur and have that image fade away just as soon as that kind of flash and, and shrink. So the dinosaur looks small right from the start. The next advanced trick I wanna show you is what I call the natural walk rule. This one is probably the most complex trick so far, so I'll write it out as well. 
Basically, it states that whenever you have a 3D model that's walking or swimming or moving forward in some way, like this dinosaur, the built-in scene or animation of that walk or swim has an implied distance per second that the object needs to travel in order for it to look natural. So let me show you what I mean. Let's combine the dinosaur walking pre-built scene or animation with a motion path. If the motion path is too slow, like in this case, the dinosaur looks like it's running against some sort of heavy wind, which is why I call it the natural walk rule. This does not look natural at all. Conversely, if the motion path is too fast for the walk, then it looks like it's on some sort of invisible conveyor belt. Therefore, you really have to play around with the timing and speed of the walk and the motion path to make it all match up. In this case, it seems that for the length of the motion path, two seconds is a good duration for every eight seconds of walk. And to see it better, let me just make it 16 seconds of walk and four seconds of motion path. Same proportions, but just easier to see what I mean. And remember, you have two ways you can control the walking. You can either increase or decrease the speed here, and you can also use the repeat function under effect options to make it repeat several times or until the end of the slide. Now here's an extra twist to make it even trickier. If you are using the grow animation on the dinosaur, like I showed you earlier, when the dinosaur gets larger, it needs to move even faster to cover the distance it needs to in a natural way. So you could have worked out the timing perfectly earlier when it's smaller, but then when it gets larger, it becomes a lot less natural, almost like an ice skating effect in this case. The way I fixed this was actually to create two motion paths connected together, the second one being faster than the first and happening right when the dinosaur is really big. So it's not a perfectly seamless transition, but it's way better than it would have been otherwise with just one continuous motion path. I have one other advanced trick to show you, but not with the dinosaur, with the shark. So before I jump over to the shark, let me summarize all the tricks I've shown you with the dinosaur by walking through the entire animation pane. First, we have the shadow and the dinosaur becoming smaller quickly to combat that blurriness effect I showed you earlier. And the duplicate picture that's on top disappears right after so you don't see that transition. Next, we have the dinosaur starting to walk as part of the scene and then also move with the motion path at the same time. And you can see there are two connected motion paths, as I mentioned before, on both the dinosaur and the shadow down here. And the dinosaur also has a turntable 3D animation which allows it to turn as it walks down the path. And finally, we have a 500% grow animation on both the dinosaur and the shadow. So only about a five or six second animation, but a lot goes into it. And that's just my personal, fairly amateur take on it. So if you're a professional designer or animator and you can think of other ways to improve the realism of this dinosaur sequence, let me know in the comments. For now, let's go to the final advanced trick and go to the shark here. If you're adding a background image to your 3D models, one thing I'd suggest is to try to blend the lighting on the 3D model to the scene you're working with. Here's what I mean. If I just take this shark and plop it onto the video background here, it looks a little bit artificial because the shark is lit very well, but the background is supposed to be under the ocean, so it's a lot darker. So one way to improve this is to actually put a transparent mask over the shark to make it match its surroundings. What I did here is I put a rectangle on top of the shark with a color that's matching the ocean, then made it semi-transparent, and then added soft edges so it could blend in with its surroundings. I only put it on top of the screen where the shark is swimming, though you could potentially put it over the whole page as well. 
play around with the colors and the transparency levels of this mask to make sure it looks good and most importantly looks better than not having a mask at all because there's no point in having it if it doesn't look good. Uh, for instance, I tried a yellow mask for the dinosaur, for example, and decided it actually made it look more dull, so decided not to use it at all, which is sometimes the best option. But you should always at least consider trying to add some sort of mask on here to make sure everything blends nicely. And as I mentioned before, if you want to download this simple swimming shark sequence, go to my download page below, and for the fully animated dinosaur and shark set, you can get them in my spicy slide pack. So there you go. These are my advanced tricks for animated 3D models in PowerPoint. Hope you enjoyed. And if you don't have the latest version of PowerPoint or don't have PowerPoint at all, you can still play around with these models and the animations. Check out how to do it in part three of this series coming up next.